Hello, friends. I'm Joey Shelton, the Dean of the Chapel, Director of Church Relations, and Director of the Center for Ministry at Millsaps College in Jackson, Mississippi. And weekly, we bring you reflections from Yates Chapel here on this incredible campus. Today, I want to talk about Advent, and it's a little bit of a difficult conversation, but bear with me because I think it's really important this year, especially. As last year, the Center for Ministry at Millsaps offered an Advent resource to pastors entitled The Audacity of Advent. The Mary Worthy Welch Rural Church Endowment of the Methodist Foundation of Mississippi helped us to produce the resource, and we are continually grateful for that. In the resource, I stated the obvious. Our existence had changed. We suffered from collective and lingering anger, angst, and grief that was present pre-COVID-19 and was exacerbated by our new world of pandemic existence. Some of us were exposed for the first time to our nation and state's political, religious, and social sin that others had known about and or experienced for their entire lives. And now in our uncertainties, some of us were pushing against acknowledgement and confession. Our ways of living and being with one another have changed. And I would like to revisit parts of what I spoke about during last year's Advent. Distrust in our institutions continues to haunt us. Political, educational, and religious dialogue is toxic. Politicians and voters alike toss aside notions of the common good, the constitutional concern for the public welfare, has tossed aside in favor of personal freedoms and personal salvation for some, while disregarding vulnerable neighbors and dismissing God's call for social holiness through acts of mercy. We have crucified the teachings of Jesus to the point that his message from the Sermon on the Mount has been ignored, explained away, or forgotten and old habits of creating theologies to support our tribal habits have resurfaced in idolatrous ways. No need for a God of grace and new life, it seems. No, we demand a God of wrath. And if you are of the opposing political party, the opposing religious faith, you are going straight to hell, and I have every excuse to help you get there. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And let me give you something to mourn. And that, by God, is the way I express Jesus' teaching to love my enemies. In the 5th century, Peter Chrysologus, Bishop of Ravenna, said, God saw the world falling to ruin because of fear. And God immediately acted to call it back with love. Our spiritual, mental, and even physical health suffers as we justify uncivil and abusive language aimed at those with whom we do not agree, those who are made in God's image. And we are exhausted by our dogmatic approach to who and what is right and wrong. We wait for God's United Methodist Church to fracture, even as brothers and sisters in Christ disaffiliate one from the other. It is Advent, a season of waiting for new birth. I heard a religious leader say that the 24-7 news cycle of inflammatory commentary is the new religious catechesis for the church. In other words, our faith journeys are formed more by the specious theology, the deceptive allures of unvetted social media and cable television 
then sacramental study, the engagement of spiritual practices, and the testing of our spirits with God's Holy Spirit through holy conferencing with each other. Are we yet bold enough to seriously make our confession before God and one another? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So thus, we now consider the liturgical season of Advent. Four weeks in the church calendar proclaiming the comings of Christ who calls us back with love. The word Advent derives from the Latin Adventus, which literally means coming. In these comings, we remember and we anticipate the past coming of Christ in His human birth, the present Christ who comes continually in word and spirit, the future Christ who will come yet again. And the audacity of Christ's comings is the good news. Comings implies Holy Spirit resilience, the capacity to bounce back from adversity, from extraordinary challenge, change, fear, and trauma. We acknowledge this resilience in the great thanksgiving of Holy Communion as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We believe in a coming that is the ultimate expression of resilience. Word and Spirit transcending the adversities of sin and death. First, in God's incarnation in Christ. Second, in Christ's resurrection. And third, in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Consider a definition for Holy Spirit resilience for Advent. Holy Spirit resilience, that which is manifested in the midst of adversity, relying on the audacious advent of Christ's continuous comings and the Holy Spirit gifts of hope, love, joy, and peace. It is possible to seek and maintain soul strength from God so that God's audacious advent mission of hope, love, and joy, and peace are nurtured through spiritual practices that foster our personal and social holiness. Fear tactics, wrath, and domination are not the ways of Christ. On the mount, Jesus compared anger and insults to murder. See Matthew 5, 21 and 22. Holy Spirit resilience derives its shape as we respond to difficulty and move forward with deeper knowledge of God, of self, identity, and connection, and is demarcated in how we live out our faith as we learn from life experiences. Holy Spirit resilience. If we recognize and we access that, equips us to move beyond human-centered emotional response to grace-filled, holy response made possible by the Christ who comes continually in word and spirit.
Our calling is to be audaciously Holy Spirit resilient. We are called to choose to be far beyond a people and an institution of grief-filled bitterness and to choose to go far beyond a resilience aimed at the status quo, going back to what was, we are beckoned to be audacious enough to let go of the need to revolve. We are commissioned to embrace God's call to evolve as we enter life fray and seek to participate in God's mission with love's abandon. To choose hope, love, joy, and peace in the midst of disparities, difficulties, fear, and trauma. A choosing made possible by the comings of Christ that emanate from regenerative acts of grace and the fullness of God's love as we participate in God's redeeming will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We can choose to embody love's abandon with courage and with wisdom, a selfless love that is generous, merciful, kind, slow to anger, and abounding in God's steadfast love. We will not do this perfectly, but we can do so audaciously with the Holy Spirit's hope, with God's love, with human joy, and with the peace of Christ within our hearts and in our relationships, one with the other. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.